In this edition of Windows Games on Linux, I'm going over Grand Theft Auto 5 and how to get it working in your system. So how to get Grand Theft Auto 5 working? It is not a simple install and go type game. Uh, I thought it would be far more simple because so many people have got it working. If you check like the ProtonDB database, you'll see tons of people. And there's also a ton of guides out there, but most of them were wrong. At least in my case, they were wrong. So I wanted to go over step by step on how to get this working. The steps are actually quite easy to follow and do. Um, so I was kind of shocked by some of the misinformation out there. Some of it has just been updated, so you don't have to do a lot of the crap that people tell you to do. And other things is just, uh, it varies from system to system. I'm using an AMD graphics card. I think NVIDIA uh, might see different issues than what I see. Time will tell. If you watch this video and you have an NVIDIA card, I say go ahead and try this and then let me know if you have any issues. I don't think you will. I honestly think this will be universal and work for everybody uh, because most of the guys out there are a little dated. So much has happened in Linux gaming that has just been fantastic. But for this video, all you're going to need is Steam and uh, also making sure that DVXK is working. So if you don't have that going, uh, check up here, title card, make sure to get DVXK working, or, or I'm sorry, DXVK working, and uh, that's all you're gonna need for this one. I am gonna have two different versions of eSync going on at the end here. One is eSync with it on, and you'll see some uh, issues there. And then the second game playthrough is with it off, and I show you how to disable it properly in Steam. So there's no INI or configuration edits. This is actually a pretty simple install and configuration. Uh, a lot of other games you've seen in the past that I do, it does get pretty in depth. But for Grand Theft Auto V, pretty much anybody can do it. I think even my daughter could probably set this up if need be, although it's Grand Theft Auto V, so that ain't happening. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to my desktop and start you in on this configuration process. Okay, so let's go ahead and start out. Uh, first thing you need to do is actually install uh, DXVK if you haven't. Make sure that is installed. Like I said, check out that video I linked up above if you have problems. The second other thing is MS Core Fonts. So this is kind of an important thing. Uh, Core Fonts is a Microsoft font that the Rockstar launcher depends on. So it's really important. On, on mine, it's just a simple uh, TTF, uh, I believe it's MS Core Fonts. Let's see here. Nope. Or fonts. It always kind of changes depending on your your uh, your operating system. So just know that hey, it, it's in here somewhere. If if you have any problems, I think mine was actually yeah. Here it is. Mine's actually TTF MS dash fonts. Uh, so if you're on Arch, good chance this is going to be the package you need. I actually pulled mine from the AUR. You can obviously build and download and install this manually to your fonts folder, but you have to have these Microsoft TTF fonts. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it, so I'm not going to go through each one. Um, for Arch, it's just in the simple package manager, manager so easy to do. Um, just install that. If not, you can always, if you're on Ubuntu or, or a Debian install, it's also a simple install from a package manager um, using apt-get. So, with that said, let's move on. You now have those dependencies set and you're ready to install the game. You can go ahead and install the game up here and then once it is installed, you'll launch it. Chances are you will get an actual code nine error on the launcher, which is completely fine. Once you get that code nine error, um, what you need to do is go over to where the actual thing is located. So I like to go to local files and then browse local files. What this does is you'll see this long path up here. Now I have mine in a special Steam library. Chances are yours is gonna look a little different. It'll say like home, your user, dot Steam, and then Steam apps, common, blah, blah, blah. So what you need to do is don't pay attention to this section up here of it. What you need to pay attention is this section over it. 
of the actual path. And we want to go back to where Steam apps is. Instead of going to common, we need to come back here and we need the compat data folder. We're going here, here, PFX, and then go into drive C users. Now, all this is pretty much uh, standard. So yours will look almost identical to this after the Steam app. So, uh, and I'll post this down in the description below. So I don't feel like you need to remember this or you can even pause the video if you like, but just know this is pretty much the exact number, the user, everything is the same for you. So just know that. Now, when you get to the Steam user folder, you're only gonna see four folders if you're getting the code name error. You're gonna be missing my documents. Make sure you be careful with the actual capitalization here, capital M, capital D, and there's a space between the my and documents. Make this folder, close it out, and then once you're back in here, what you need to do now is verify the integrity of game files. <laughs> I know what this is, sounds crazy, and it does take a little bit to do, after relaunching it, but just go ahead and click this and it will validate and do this. So what this does is it goes through and says, hey, is there any changes to any of the files? And it'll look and find the launcher and goes, hey, the launcher files are missing in my documents and go ahead and add those uh, that you need in here. So this is a very important thing. I've already done this, so um, I may or may not let this run. And once this is done, you know, 100% complete, you can go ahead and launch and your launcher will show up and show up properly. Um, it'll request an actual username and login. You'll go ahead and do your Rockstar uh, email address, the password for your password, and then you'll do the CAPCA. You know, click here and then you'll have to select all the squares with cars or fire hydrants or some crap. You only have to do this once from what I've found, and then you can launch into the game, which is fantastic. So from here, you're set. And um, the one thing I will mention is the settings in here. The settings in the actual GTA 5 uh, launcher, you need to actually go into it and change it to your resolution. Close the game out and then relaunch. Once doing this, everything is set and you are ready to play GTA 5. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into some gameplay. I'm gonna show you two versions of gameplay. One's with eSync enabled, which is the settings as you see here with no added triggers. And then I'm gonna come back into here for the second gameplay under GTA 5, and I'm gonna add an actual trigger under the general tab here. So under general, I'm gonna actually go into set launch options and do a special setting to disable eSync. And this kind of is the final piece of the puzzle to make sure you have crisp, buttery, smooth GTA 5 gameplay. All right, so let's go ahead and launch Grand Theft Auto 5. After our tweaks and everything, this should launch. I did notice a little bit of a delay here, which you guys will see when I go ahead and launch this. Also, please note, I am using an ultra wide here, so uh, that's why you see the black lines on the top and bottom. My resolution is 2540 by 1080. Also, I enabled some uh, DXVK options. So what you're seeing in the top left, you're gonna be able to check out my frames per second. All the actual driver settings that I'm currently using as of this recording which is January 1st or 2nd of 2019. All right, I'm just gonna go hit that and we're gonna go into story mode. Uh, as far as settings go down here, um, most of everything is just set as the defaults. So in graphics, nothing crazy. The resolution actually doesn't show up properly in wine, so that's okay. Um, and everything else I just left as is. Uh, so nothing nothing crazy. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and not apply. And we're gonna go right into story mode. Now this is actually the first time I've ever played this game. So uh, I purchased it just because it was on sale on Steam and there's been various requests to see how it plays, how well it does. And 
I just wanted to show you just the basic performance. It should stay around 60 FPS. If it doesn't, you know, um, I'll, I'll definitely mention that, but there's no reason why it should dip below that. And this is a violent game. I am seeing some stuttering here, so I probably need to change that. So based on our initial uh, playthrough there, I did notice some stuttering, especially as the cutscenes went from scene to scene. Uh, so let's go ahead and disable eSync as is one highly recommended when you go through uh, Proton DB. Almost everybody says to do that. So we're gonna just uh, go ahead and put this in here. Just make sure it's there's a space between the equals one and the percent sign command. Uh, with this, we should be able to easily uh, disable eSync, probably smooth out a little bit of what we're seeing on the actual uh, problems um, from the initial playthrough. So with that, we could go ahead and launch back into it and then do a little bit more of the gameplay and see what we get. Overall though, uh, well over 100 FPS throughout almost all the gameplay, buttery smooth and really what we want, but I just wanna ease some of those transitions that we were seeing um, and causing some micro stutters there. Alright, everybody pays attention, no one gets hurt. Go! Open the door! They'll get worse than hurt! Hey! Hey! Ah, come on! Finally! Okay, with that, we should have just a perfect 
uh, example of the difference between e-sync off and on obviously off completely removed all the micro stutter all of the things we were seeing between the transitions and well over 100 fps most instances i was like up to i think 140 150 i don't know i'd have to go back through the clips here but uh, overall, a really good experience for GTA 5. Again, I've never played the game other than just this little snippet to record this video. And you guys kind of came out and, and wanted me to make this video. And that's why I went ahead and showed this gameplay, how to set it up and configure it.